55 Cancri is a system I've talked about at length before. It contains five known planets, though recently there has been some doubt about the fifth one, each ranging from about eight Earth masses to almost four Jupiter masses, with orbits ranging from 15 years to seven hours. The system itself is a binary, containing a K-type star and a smaller red dwarf on a very distant orbit. So far, all known planets orbit the larger star, which was given the official name Copernicus in 2015. Each of these planets have their own names as well, with 55 Cancri E, B, C, F, and D being named Janssen, Galileo, Brya, Harriet, and Lipperhe, respectively. However, a new paper came out recently suggesting that 55 Cancri has more than just these four, potentially five planets. Most interestingly, the second star, 55 Cancri B, has gotten its first two planets, and there's evidence of a sixth planet around the main star, and maybe potentially evidence of a seventh. So in short, 55 Cancri now has four confidently confirmed planets, one planet that used to be confirmed but there has been some recent doubt about, two new planets around the second star, a new candidate around Copernicus, and a trend line that could really be anything but has the potential chance to be another candidate, bringing 55 Cancri's total planet count up to, in the most optimistic scenario, nine. And one of them is on the outer edge of 55 Cancri B's habitable zone. So let's first look at these new candidates around the second star, 55 Cancri B, and then talk about the outer system of Copernicus, and see what the chances are of Lipperhe and the somewhat doubtful Planet 6 existing. First a bit about the binary system itself. 55 Cancri A, the primary star and also named Copernicus, is about 90% the mass of the Sun, separated by several hundred AUs, 55 Cancri B, the second star, which is not to be confused with 55 Cancri B, the planet, which is also named Galileo. The star is a small red dwarf, about 26% the mass of the Sun, but exactly how far away it is from Copernicus is somewhat unknown right now. This is because, to accurately calculate the distance, we need to know its position in three-dimensional space, and only two dimensions are known with a high amount of precision. Though to get a general estimate, the new recent paper lists a projected separation about 1065 AU, or about 0.016 light years, or similar to the distance of the start of the Sun's Oort cloud. This distance is likely somewhat inaccurate, but is probably within the ballpark of the true number, give or take a few hundred AU. So these stars are far enough apart from one another to only have a minimal impact on the planets and their systems, and for all intents and purposes, these are essentially two separate planetary systems whose stars just so happen to orbit each other. For more information about the currently known planets of 55 Cancri, I've already made a grand tour of 55 Cancri video, though clearly that will now need to be revised now that there's potentially three or four new planets but just as a refresher. Janssen, the first planet, is the one everyone talks about for potentially being made of diamonds, and you might know it as 55 Cancri E. It probably isn't made of diamonds. It's about eight Earth masses, which is basically half the mass of Neptune, but its radius suggests it's a rocky planet like Earth. It's incredibly hot, tidally locked to its star, and almost certainly has a global ocean of lava, with crushing surface gravity. Its atmosphere is a bit of a gray area, with James Webb observations suggesting it has one, but other observations suggesting it doesn't, and it's beyond the scope of this video. It also probably has volcanic activity, and has dayside temperatures in the thousands of degrees. The nightside has also been measured as extremely hot as well. Galileo, the second planet, is at least 80% the mass of Jupiter, and is a hot gas giant taking just over two weeks to orbit Copernicus. It's close enough to Janssen to be easily visible in its night sky. It only barely transits Copernicus from our perspective, so very little is known about it in comparison to Janssen, which does transit, but based on its estimated temperature, it's likely cloudless. Brya, the third planet, is a smaller and cooler version of Galileo, at least 15% the mass of Jupiter, taking 44 days to orbit the star. Nothing else is known about it. Harriet, my personal favorite planet of the system, is on the outer edge of the habitable zone, where temperatures are right for liquid water to exist. It's a gas giant about 50 times more massive than Earth and has a mildly eccentric orbit, which probably causes seasonal variations. This makes it potentially a temperate ice giant, which is one of my personal favorite types of planet. Skipping over the new candidate, 55 Cancri G, which we'll talk about more later, we get to Lipperhe, the fifth and maybe sixth planet. It's at least 3.8 times the mass of Jupiter, making it the biggest planet in the 55 Cancri system, assuming it exists. Radio velocity observations of the system support the existence of Lipperhe, but also support a four-planet model of Janssen, Galileo, Brya, and Harriet without a Lipperhe just as well, so more observations are needed to confirm the planet. If it does exist, it has an extremely similar orbit to Jupiter, but its higher mass would give it a much different environment with more internal heat. So, as you can see, all of 55 Cancri's planets are really unique. It has a lava planet, a hot Jupiter, a warm ice giant, a temperate ice giant, and a potential cold Jupiter analog and the new planets of the second star are no different. 
The two new planets around 55 Cancri b, the smaller red dwarf orbiting Copernicus, are called 55 Cancri b b and 55 Cancri b c, and don't have official names like the rest of the planets in the system. The first new planet, 55 Cancri b b, is estimated to be about 3.5 Earth masses, making it to date the smallest known planet in the 55 Cancri system, but that may change for reasons I'll get to soon. It takes about 6.8 days to orbit 55 Cancri b, giving it the second shortest year of any 55 Cancri planet after Janssen. Because these planets are so new, no measurements of their environment have been made, but given the distance from its star, 55 Cancri b b likely receives about 2.6 times the energy Earth does from the Sun, probably making it fairly hot, though not nearly as hot as Janssen or Galileo. Much further away from the star is 55 Cancri b c, which is estimated to be about 5.3 Earth masses, also smaller than Janssen. Most interestingly, kind of like Harriet, 55 Cancri BC is on the outer edge of its star's habitable zone, and receives about the same energy Mars gets from the Sun. Given these cool temperatures and high mass, I think it's very likely this planet will have an atmosphere and an interesting environment. It takes about 34 days to orbit the star. This makes 55 Cancri the first binary star system with a planet in each star's habitable zone. It's also the sixth binary system ever with both stars known to have their own separate planets. The 55 Cancri b system has been observed to be much smaller than the Copernicus system, with the observations from this paper ruling out the presence of giant planets with orbits lasting up to a few years. But interestingly, planets b b and b c are in a 5 to 1 orbital resonance, which is far enough apart to leave room for additional, unseen, lower mass rocky planets in the system. Speaking of unseen planets, let's talk about the gap between Harriet and the unconfirmed Lipperhey. This gap is similar to the distance between Venus and Jupiter in our solar system, and as we know, around the Sun there are two additional planets in that space, and an entire asteroid belt. Assuming 55 Cancri is similar to the solar system, there could definitely be additional planets in that gap. And that's what this paper suggests as well, proposing a potential new 55 Cancri candidate around Copernicus, 55 Cancri G. Or now that both stars have planets, calling it 55 Cancri A G is more accurate. AG is less confirmed than Lipperhe, and Lipperhe itself already has some problems that are a topic for another video, so it's firmly a candidate. If it does exist, it's between Harriet and Lipperhe, at least 0.9 times the mass of Jupiter, though that's only a minimum, and would have a mildly eccentric, oval-shaped orbit. If this planet is real, it's likely a cool gas giant hotter than Jupiter, but colder than Mars, with large seasonal variations due to its eccentric orbit. Even less confirmed than AG, and much further out than even Lipperhe, there is one more thing to talk about. This is a linear trend occurring in the Copernicus system that could really be anything, but is hypothetically explained by an additional planet candidate on an orbit lasting longer than 24 years, but most likely longer than 48 years. This hypothetical planet is so unconfirmed the paper doesn't even call it a candidate, mainly because there's no evidence that suggests it is a planet over the many potential other explanations, but it does remain interesting. If it is a planet, it's likely a very cold gas giant about two times the mass of Jupiter. If it's real, it would be called 55 Cancri H, but again, there's no reason to suspect it exists right now, and the evidence, if you can call it that, is extremely weak at best. So to recap, there are two new planets around 55 Cancri b, the second star of the 55 Cancri system, three and five Earth masses, one of which is in the habitable zone. This brings 55 Cancri's total planet count up to six, being split between two stars. In addition to this, there's Lipperhe, which might exist, 55 Cancri AG, which might exist but with a smaller chance, and some currently unexplained observations of which a new planet is one of the many potential explanations, but is too unconfirmed to be considered a true exoplanet candidate. If in the most optimistic scenario possible, all of these planets turn out to be real, 55 Cancri's total planet count will go up to 9, becoming the first exoplanet system to pass the solar system in number of planets. And at least two, maybe three of these planets will be bigger than Jupiter, which is pretty interesting considering that Copernicus is smaller than the Sun, so you generally expect smaller planets. This is also a very old system, at least 7 billion years old, which only makes it more interesting. And it's now one of the very few binary star systems where you know that both stars have their own individual planets. Clearly 55 Cancri still has a lot of interesting stuff to find, and we now have a lot of new planet candidates to confirm. The system has probably become my favorite exoplanet system ever, even ignoring the fact that it has Janssen. So hopefully we'll learn more about it soon and get to confirming some of these planets. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, check out my other videos about exoplanets and space exploration.